Ms. Young, I think everybody's in so far. If you want to go ahead and get started. Sure. Hi, guys. Um, again, it's Miss Young. I have met um, most of you either in person or virtually. Um, I'm the Director of Enrollment, and I am helping your parents with this whole process and you as well. A couple of housekeeping things that I just wanted to kind of go over. Um, please make sure that your um, audio stays on mute. Very important. Uh, we want to make sure that we get through this um, as quickly as possible. So any questions that you have, there is a chat button, a chat feature at the bottom. Feel free to use that and ask questions as they are going, as we're going along, if something pops up. Um, but make sure that we're all kind of on this and we want to be respectful and use nice, kind language. But most importantly, we want you guys to engage with us. Um, that's the best we can do virtually. So please participate, please engage, and let's make this as fun as we possibly can virtually. Hi folks, my name is Mrs. Dorsey. I am the head of school. That's our version of principal at Riverside. And I've been so distracted because I'm just clicking through and seeing your names and your faces. And it is so good to meet you even in this way. Welcome to Riverside High School. Uh, you are officially an Argonaut and we can't wait to have you in the building. Um, but I will say for the last week, I've been meeting with your teachers via Zoom and we have been surprisingly shocked at how good it is going. We've had a great time. We have figured out some tips and tricks that make Zoom uh, actually better than bearable. So I just wanna welcome you and say that um, even via Zoom, we're gonna have a great time together. You can see some pictures of me and my family. Um, I grew up in Northwest Indiana on a farm and that barn in the bottom left is actually the barn that I grew up playing basketball against. That was where my basketball hoop was and uh, grew up there, um, a student athlete at the school that I grew up going to. I moved to Indianapolis to go to Butler University and stuck around, have been in Indy ever since. Um, that's my dog, Prudence, and my husband, Mr. Dorsey, and my daughter, Rosie, who's four and a half, and you'll see her running around a lot just so, as soon as we can be back together in person. Prior to being the principal here at Riverside, I was a school counselor. Um, and then before that, I was an English teacher. And you can see my favorite book to teach was Zora Neale Hurston's Their Eyes Were Watching God. So I am just so excited to welcome you here to introduce myself to you a little bit. Um, and I'm excited for you to meet our team, but also for you to meet each other. I was telling some of our team members that some of my closest friends are people that I met during orientations in high school and in college. And so even in the virtual setting, I hope that you can connect with one another. And I think the last thing I'll leave you with is actually uh, something that for those of my staff members who've been around for a couple of years, uh, they will have heard me say this on opening days of school years before. But my final thing I want to leave you with is actually a bit of a challenge. Um, as you join Riverside, you are joining a school that this year, for the first time ever, we will have all grades, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And that's because we've been building our school from the ground up starting three years ago, and this is our fourth year. And already in three, now four years, we have had a lot of success. We have um, performed really well on standardized assessments and compared to our peers, we're doing great. So all of that is great. But even more so, our students are already leaving an incredible legacy. They are building clubs that will be around for decades to come. They are starting varsity athletic programs that are winning sectional competitions and we anticipate having a lot of success for years to come as well. They're starring in plays, they're playing instruments, they're building robotics, um, being on robotics teams. And so my question for you, even now, is what legacy will you leave here at Riverside High School? What role will you play in helping us be a phenomenal high school? How do you want to connect? How do you want to leave an impression? What do you want to get involved in? And that is a true statement, even in a virtual setting, because we aren't giving up on clubs. We aren't giving up on any of that good stuff. We're going to find a way to still make all of that happen so long as we're here in a virtual setting. So that's all I wanted to say is just welcome to Riverside High School. We're so glad to have you. Uh, I think you'll find as soon as you get into your classes a week from today that you have amazing classmates, you have amazing teachers, and that even this setting cannot deter the great work that we're doing at Riverside High School. 
Um, I'm going to sign off here for a moment, but welcome everyone. Great to have you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Dorsey. Um, I, hello, Argonauts. It's so good to see you and to see all of your faces. Like Mrs. Dorsey said, uh, we are so overjoyed to be able to begin uh, this year with you and are really excited to share with you uh, some additional information that you uh, already learned a little bit about in your ed puzzles. So I'll go ahead and introduce myself again. For those of you who don't know, I'm Emmanuel Harper. I'm the assistant head of school here at Riverside High School. I was formerly a French teacher at our first campus, Heron High School. In fact, Mrs. Dorsey and I uh, taught in the same trailer next to one of the buildings at Heron High School together. And I'm so excited to be with you this virtual uh, next couple weeks, and then hopefully we'll get to see each other in person. Hello everyone, my name is Ms. Bowen. Um, I will be working on this team with Mr. Harper, Mr. Davis Johnson, Ms. Dorsey as one of your Dean of Students this year. Um, this will be my third year at Riverside. Um, my original role was as an English teacher. I'll still be doing that um, in some capacity as well, but I'm really excited to be working with you. Um, I'm ready to empower, ready to help you guys have the most supportive and um, emotionally supportive, socially supportive, and academically supportive year that you've ever had before in your lives in school. It's going to be great. Um, yeah. Uh, love that. Uh, I am Mr. Davis Johnson. I'm also a Dean of Students here at Riverside. I'm new, just like you all. Um, January will make a year uh for me being at riverside so i'm still learning with you all but i really look forward to just learning about you learning about your goals and dreams so that we can really really take the next four years and help you reach those goals and dreams hello everybody i am miss butler i'm one of the school counselors uh here at riverside i specifically mainly work with ninth and 10th graders. So I have seen so many of your names and I'm just so excited um, that we're all here together, even though it's a little different. Um, I've been at Riverside for about a year. Um, before that, I was in the schools um, as a therapist. So I, I am a therapist part-time as well. Um, and I'm just so excited you guys are here and we will you know the school counseling team um, Mr. Cushman will introduce himself but we are here for you um, this is a unique situation but we're gonna um, get through it together hi everyone welcome my name is Mr. Koshin. I'm the other school counselor here at Riverside I'm working alongside Miss Butler I primarily work with 11 and 12th graders um, so even if I don't interact with you a whole ton uh, right now, know that like we will be spending lots of time together uh, eventually. I'm also our director of college and career counseling. And so um, I just can't wait for, like Ms. Dorsey said, you guys to build a legacy because that's something that like we are going to use to then launch you off into the world when you graduate into whatever it is that you decide to do um, in the world. I'm one of our founding teachers, so I was an English teacher prior to this. Mr. Harper taught in my classroom one time back at Heron, um, and so we are so thrilled to have you join our family, um, and I can't wait to meet all of you and learn all your names. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Mr. Hughes. I'm the athletic director here at Riverside. It is my job to take all of the coaches that we have for the different sports, and I am to be their coach. So I'm to help them in any way possible to make our teams a success. Currently, right now, we have two sports going on. And they are practicing even before school starts. So if you're interested in running cross country or playing volleyball, uh, please get in touch with me as soon as possible so that we can get you on those teams. And everyone knows Miss Young. Miss Young, just say hi again. Hello. <laughs> Great. Well, Argonauts, uh, you are in for a fun Zoom call today because we have uh, some outcomes, so some things that you will be able to do, learn, and understand uh, by the end of your uh, interaction today. So the first is to practice using Zoom features and apply Riverside norms and culture to online learning. 
The second is to understand the daily and weekly schedule. The third is to summarize the most important online platforms you will need for virtual learning. The fourth is to identify the UBPs, the universal behavior policies for virtual learning. And then the fifth one is to acquire best practice for being on time to class and being prepared. So let's go ahead and practice some of those norms argonauts. So Ms. Young had mentioned the chat feature on Zoom. What I would like for everyone to do is in the chat feature, type your favorite food. So go ahead and take 30 seconds to type your favorite food in the chat feature. What are, uh, I'm, my chat feature is blocked. Ms. Butler or Mr. Koshin or Mr. Davis Johnson, what are some of the things students are writing? Man, we've got a lot of pizza. Um, we've got some fried chicken. I've saw some pasta in there. Steak and baked potatoes. That's a yeah. champ move. Uh, sushi, sushi for sure. Definitely oh, I love macaroni. sushi. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Take another 10 seconds, Argonauts, to uh, write your favorite food in there. Okay, so you guys are familiar with the chat feature on Zoom. That's going to be critical for a lot of the classroom uh, opportunities that you'll have and dialogues that you're going to have with your teachers going forward. So I am really glad that you guys are able to use the chat feature. The other one is, the other norm Ms. Young talked about is respect. So at Riverside High School, we thrive on diversity. And one way we want to show that is the foods that you guys listed. So I don't want you to chat anything right now, but just scroll through the chat and just notice, are there any foods that you haven't tried or foods that you don't like? And if there are foods that you want to try, you have uh, some friends there who have listed what those foods are. And if there are foods that you don't like, maybe you should give them a try again. You never know, you'll grow into the foods. I have not tried grasshoppers. Uh, <laughs> so we'll put grasshoppers, oh my goodness. I have also not tried grasshoppers. <laughs> Uh, so we're also going to do another really fun Zoom tool, which will allow this presentation to be so much more engaging, which is annotation. You get to annotate. You get to actually draw on this page. So either at the top or the bottom of your screen, there's a menu bar, and it should look like that first menu bar here. And then I want you to click annotate. And then once you've found the annotate, there should be a little button called stamp. Once you've found that in the chat feature, just click done. So you don't need to actually annotate, but once you've found these tools, I want you to type done in the chat feature. Awesome. I see some students have found, beginning to find those. I see a, a couple of students that are already engaging in the process, which is great. Uh, don't engage yet, y'all. Uh, we'll have an opportunity to do that. Uh, one more thing. At the, um, at the top of your screen, um, you can click View Options, and the Annotate tool is right there. So if you haven't found it, I saw a couple people who haven't found it. It's at the top under View Options. It's the third uh, thing down. Thank you, Ms. Butler. All right, some of you are finding it. Some of you are already experimenting, which is great. Uh, trust me, there'll be lots of time to experiment with them. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, go forward. So here's your first opportunity to experiment with the annotate feature. So there are two questions, Argonauts. Would you rather get a penny for a day that doubles each day for 30 days or get a one-time payment of a million dollars? So instead of using the draw tool, there should be a tool that looks like a heart or a check mark. You can use the heart or check mark to put in the chat which one you prefer. So go ahead and do that now. Oh, 
Okay, it seems to be like an even split between uh, a penny a day that doubles every day for 30 days or a one-time payment of a million dollars. Actually, it seems maybe the pennies are, are winning by just, uh, just a hair. All right, so uh, here's a newsflash. If anyone, Argonaut, actually proposes this choice to you, always choose the penny a day because by the end of 30 days, you will actually have $10 million because of how uh, exponential your growth will be. So just FYI, always do the penny for 30 days, even though it seems uh, less than the million bucks. Fantastic, great. So now you have used the annotation feature, and that's gonna be really important as we do some checks for understanding on the videos that you watched in preparation for today's conversation. So let's begin. You're gonna first hear from the counseling department and they're going to go through some quiz questions for you as well as talk about some additional logistics and things you need to understand for the first day. All right, Ms. Butler here. We're gonna go over some true and false um, questions and we're also just gonna learn some things about, about Riverside and the counseling department. So I want you to, um, get a stamp with the annotate uh, annotations, get a stamp, either the arrow or the check mark or the X or the heart or the star. And the question is, the school counseling team focuses on social emotional support, academic counseling and college and career counseling. True or false? All right, lots of truths, that's great. Yep. All right. So the answer is true. Awesome. So yes. So as a counseling team, we focus on um, the social and emotional support um, of you. So we want to support you um, and also academic counseling. So our goal is for you to graduate high school, right? And so our job is to help you to get through that, to get through high school. And then also, um, we want to help set you up for what is after high school, so that college and career counseling. Are you going to go to college? Are you going to go right into the workforce? Are you going to do the Peace Corps? You know, anything like that. We want to help set you up um, for your future. All right, everyone. Let's take a, uh, a look at how your days are going to look uh, once we start school next Monday. Um, so you know that you are going to be in eight total classes, right? Eight total periods. However, we're on block scheduling. So you're only going to have four of those classes each day. So you're going to have four classes on A day and then four classes on B day. The way that your week looks is over on the right hand side. So Mondays are always going to be in A day. So you're going to have your four A day classes on Monday. Tuesday is always going to be a B day. You're going to have your four B day classes on Tuesday. And at that point, you will have completed one cycle of all eight of your classes. On Wednesday, we are going to have office hours and independent workday. We'll talk a little bit about what that looks like here in a minute. And then on Thursday, you're going to complete that same cycle over again. So you'll have your four A day classes on Thursday, and then your five, or I'm sorry, and then your four B day classes on Friday. And that is the way that your week is going to go. Uh, every single week for the whole semester, even if we go back hybrid, right? So just get that into your brain right now. Um, so, Mr. Harper, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. All right. So, I want you to put a check or a heart next to each one of these statements that are true. So, A days and B days are block schedule days. If that's true, put a check mark there. Mondays and Thursdays are A days. Thursdays. Tuesdays and Fridays are B days. There are classes on Wednesdays. So whichever one of those statements you think are true, there might be more than one that's true. Go ahead and check it or put a heart. Five more seconds. All right. So what you have accurately deduced is that three out of those four statements are true. So A days and B days are block schedules. Mondays and Thursdays are A days. Tuesdays and Fridays are B days. 
There are no actual classes on Wednesdays. You will have school. We will have school activities going on, but not actual classes that you need to attend. All right. Sorry. <laughs> Here we go. All right, Ms. Butler, can you talk through a yep. daily schedule now? Yep. All right. So this is your daily schedule. So Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. You're going to have advisory, your homeroom. So that's a, that's a term that we use here at Riverside is advisory. Advisory is your homeroom. That's at 9 a.m. So you are going to be ready for the day at 8.50 so that you can log in and um, log into your advisory, um, which will be um, a Zoom link um, at 9 a.m. And then you'll have like a little break for 15 minutes, so 9.15 to 9.30 your passing period and then you're going to go to your first class okay so a1 like a1 or b1 that's at 9 30 and that'll be to 10 45. you'll have another short break and we're going to talk about um, a daily routine here in a minute um, but after that break you'll go to your second period at 11 um, and that'll be 11 to 12 15. Um, you'll have lunch for a whole hour so you can take a break you can eat lunch you can um, you know, get outside, um, whatever you need to do to come back at 1.15 to log in for um, your third period. Then there will be another passing period, another break for 15 minutes, and your last period is going to be from 2.45 to 4 o'clock, okay? So, so remember, Mondays and Thursdays are A days, Tuesdays and Fridays are B days, uh, and Wednesdays you're going to have office hours, um, that you can attend if you if you need, or that's a day that you can um, catch up on homework that you need to do. Um, so yeah, I think we can go to the next one, Mr. Harper. Okay, so I want you to get that annotate um, button. Uh, click that again. True or false? The virtual day begins at 9 a.m. in advisory. True or false? Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Some superior annotation skill. I know. I agree. This is great. I you guys are agree. already comfortable. Yeah. 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 All right. Now the answer is. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is. True, it's true. You start every day, um, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday at 9 a.m. in advisory, okay? So let's talk about your daily routine, okay? So this is just an example, but I wanna talk through a daily routine. Um, it's very important to start the day, uh, to, to wake up at the same time every day and to have a routine. This will get easier if you establish a routine. So this is an example. You wake up at 8 a.m. Maybe you, wait, you generally wake up earlier, but let's say 8 a.m. Let's say you wanna work out a little bit or stretch. Um, you wanna shower. You're gonna eat breakfast and then you're gonna set up for the day. So what I mean by that, um, it's important to have a separate space uh, for you to do your schoolwork, whether that's in a, a corner in, a, in your bedroom, but there, there's, there's a space where you can set up every day and that's where you do school, okay? If that changes every day, then it, it gets a little bit more complicated. So if you can, have a, the same spot every day, okay? And they're gonna log into advisory, your homeroom, um, and then you're gonna have passing period. And I just kind of put some, um, some random ideas, like you can take a walk during that break, you can get some water, get a snack, um, stretch. So I just kind of ran, I kind of just ran through this um, before, but this is just an example. So um, when you eat lunch, when you have a full hour, I want you moving around, getting outside, um, decompressing in whatever ways that you need so that you can finish out the day well. Um, Mr. Harper, will you actually just go back a couple slides? There. Um, so we didn't have a slide about this, but I realized that you might have questions about it. Uh, you don't actually have your schedule quite yet. Ms. Butler and I are working hard on building everyone's schedule right now. Those should come to you via email at the, um, towards the end of the week. 
But just know that, yes, the schedule can be confusing, especially at first until you get used to it. You can, of course, email any one of us that are, that are in this, um, on this call right now. But if you remember nothing else, get to your advisory teacher by 9 a.m. If you can get to your advisory teacher and you don't remember anything else, we can figure it out from there. Um, so that is like really your go-to person. And if you can make it to their room by nine, then we can get your rest of the day set up. Okay, go ahead. All right. So Everest High School, we are a college preparatory liberal arts high school. The, what that means for us is that students take all five core subjects, all four years of high school. Um, this is what colleges expect from us. And this is how we get our students prepared to do whatever they want to do when they graduate from high school. So with that being said, which of these followings is not a core subject? Is it art, language, English, or social studies? Have some people in the chat who are saying art as well. Yeah. Give it three more seconds. Two, one. All right. Uh, so once again, you guys continue to kill it in annotation and with the right answers. Um, so our five core classes are language, social studies, English, and then also um, math and science. Do we have art? Yes, absolutely. We have an amazing art teacher and we'd love for all of you to take art, uh, truly. Um, but it's an elective class, right? So we don't require you to take art and that's the difference, okay? All right, so here are some common terms that you might see and hear, uh, see on your schedule or here in the first week. So advisory, we've already talked about. Don't click yet, next, no, Mr. Harper. In the chat, if you think you know what advisory is, uh, go ahead and type it in there. So when we say advisory, what do we mean? Olivia was quick with the draw. Olivia, the answer. Olivia is the winner. Olivia, you get 75 cents because that's how many quarters I have in my desk. Congratulations. Everyone is correct. This is our homeroom. So Mr. Harper, go ahead. And uh, so your advisory teacher is kind of like your school dad or school mom. They're responsible for you. They're like your go-to person, your first line of defense. If you ever have any questions or problems, that should always be your first person that you go to. All right. Next term is seminar. So you're gonna see seminar on your schedule. When you see that, what does that mean? Go ahead and type that in the chat. Ooh, I think uh, Maddie was okay, quickest. Okay, Maddie, oh, Maddie McClellan, of course. All right, okay, Maddie, I'll give you 75 cents <laughs> too. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so go ahead and click Mr. Harper. So seminar is our study hall. Um, so when you see that, that's what that means. Um, for virtual learning, remember that you do not actually have to show up to your seminar, right? Like you don't have to log on to Zoom for your seminar. So when you see that during virtual learning, that's just going to be a period where you don't have to go to class or don't, um, don't have to like be on with an adult. We would definitely still suggest that you work on school during that time and do your homework, right? Because that's what that time is for. Um, that's not actually a class that you have to attend during virtual learning. All right, one more. Okay, office hours. When we say office hours, what do we mean by that? Okay, Phoenix, all right. Tadriana, close second. Yeah. Charlotte's got it too. Okay, all right, Mr. Harper. <laughs> So this is where you can get help from your teacher or check in with them like Charlotte said, right? So you can get um, on Wednesdays, you're gonna be able to sign up for individual one-on-one -on -one appointments. And you're also going to, just gonna be able to like pop into your teacher's virtual Zoom room and work with them or ask them questions about anything you need help from. Students who regularly attend office hours are the most successful. So we could not recommend it highly enough for you. And this is on Wednesdays, okay? So this is what your Wednesdays are for. All right. Okay, uh, one more thing on here. So what is the minimum percentage, the lowest grade that you need to earn 
in order to pass a class. Click whichever box, annotate whichever box you think is correct. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, so I'm seeing a lot of 60s and I'm seeing a lot of 70s, which, if Mr. Harper, you can go ahead and clear it, is accurate because this is a little bit of a trick question. While we are on virtual learning, a 60% will earn you a passing grade and a credit, right? You can get a D. And then you have learning and learning. Mm -hmm. Um, when we go back fully in person, typically it's a 70%, right? Uh, so that's what it normally is, but we've reduced it to 60% just while we're on virtual learning. If you want to shoot for an honors diploma, and we can talk to you more about this if you think you might uh, want to do it, you need a 70% in all of your classes, okay? So that's something that you need to just keep in the back of your mind uh, for right now. Um, okay. All right, oh, sorry. sorry, friends. All right. Okay, so that wraps up um, our academic portion of this. Um, I know that we only scratched the surface on what we're going to cover with you throughout the year and any questions you might have. Just know that we are going to dive into all this and much, much more um, when school starts, especially in your advisory period. Uh, you can always check out your handbook. Uh, there are a ton of our policies and procedures and answers to questions you might have in there. Um, and you can always email me or Ms. Butler. If you just email guidance at riversideheadschool.org, you will get both of us. Um, and Ms. Butler just put it in the chat there. Uh, and we would love to hear from you. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Mr. Koshin and Ms. Butler. Argonauts, you guys have a great team in those two. I know we know it's been really tough uh, over the summer and particularly since the pandemic has been happening. So if you need to reach out and just process what's been going on personally or in society, please, please do reach out to Ms. Ms. Butler and Mr. Koshin because they are on your team. They're going to advocate for you and be uh, one of your best resources at Riverside High School. So now we're going to transition from the counseling department to the AHS, AHS office. Now in the chat, tell us what does AHS stand for? <laughs> and it's okay if you don't know or guess. So Benjamin, great answer. I like that you guessed. Academic Honor Society, that's great. Someone said, I don't know. I appreciate your honesty. Ooh, London. London with the uh, first correct answer. It means the assistant head of school. Um, it's the assistant head of school office. It's where me, Miss Bowen, and Mr. Davis Johnson will reside to support you. Uh, so now you know, Argonauts. So first we wanna talk about some platforms that you will be using on the first day of school. Zoom, Google Classroom, Edpuzzle, and PowerSchool. I wanna quickly go through what the four of these platforms are and then we'll do some quick fun annotation games. So Zoom is the virtual classroom space. Think of Zoom as if you were going to school and going into a classroom, Instead of going into a classroom, you're going into Zoom. So what we're doing right now would be your virtual classroom. So I would be your teacher and you would be my students and we would be engaging in this way. You'll have a Zoom link for each and every one of your classrooms. So you'll click on a Zoom link, be in your classroom for 75 minutes and then exit out of this Zoom and then go into a different Zoom. So Zoom is going to be the virtual space for classrooms. Well, Mr. Harper, if that's your virtual classroom, what's Google Classroom? Well, Google Classroom is where we are going to house your assignments. That's where you're going to go to download reading that you have for the day, look at your math problems and complete your math problems. Any assignments that you have for your classes are going to be on Google Classroom. 
and you will actually get an email in your Riverside High School email towards the end of the week or the weekend to invite you into your Google Classrooms. So that's where all your assignments are going to be housed. Edpuzzle are video assignments. So if your teacher wants to show you a video that includes questions, they're likely going to put that on Edpuzzle. So you'll have your own account on Edpuzzle to watch some interactive videos that your teachers will have. Those will likely be inside of your Google Classroom setup, but that's just its own separate platform that we want to make you aware of. And lastly, PowerSchool. PowerSchool is where your grades are going to be stored. So let's say you just got done with your first week of school and you wanna know what your grade is in a particular class. You will go to powerschool.com, log in and see all of your classes and what your grades are. Don't worry, Argonauts, you don't have a username and password for that yet. You'll receive that towards the end of the week. So Argonauts, take a quick moment to review those bullet points because our first annotation activity from our office begins in just a moment. All right, Argonauts. Mr. Here's Harper? My yes. May I interrupt one second? And I'm sorry if you are, if you are gonna cover this and I missed it, but um, students will need to have their Riverside email. Have, are, is that coming up? Am I jumping? It is. Okay, sorry. Going no. dark again, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. House. See, Argonauts, we look out for each other. So I appreciate that, Ms. House. Uh, but our first uh, annotation, Argonauts, is which platform is the virtual classroom? And again, if you don't have access to the annotation feature, you can put it on the chat. Oh, okay. goodness, Argonauts. I'm trying to stump you, and I just can't. Uh, so, correct. <laughs> Underneath all of your annotations, uh, it is Zoom. Zoom is going to be your virtual classroom. So that's where you want to go the very first day to get into your classrooms. All right, so here's just a quick peek again at the platforms and what they are because question number two is coming up real quick in three, two, one. All right, which platform do you use to check grades? Ooh, whoever did that circle was uh, the first one. <laughs> Hopefully you guys uh, remember what it says because everyone's covering it up, but great, good. And I see in the chat, you guys are uh, doing great well. Power School, fantastic. All right, Power School is going to be the place where you check all of your grades. Well done, Argonauts. All right, quick look again at what the platforms are and your next Zoom annotation will be in three, two, one, where do you get your assignments? Oh, the heart, the heart was first. Oh, there's an arrow to Google Classrooms. There's some Ed puzzles. Well done, Argonauts. Uh, this is actually a, uh, a little bit of a trick question. Um, so let me go ahead and show you why. Let me do that. So you will primarily get your assignments from Google Classroom. That's where all of them are housed. So if you ever need to actually get an assignment, you will go to your Google Classroom. However, some of you marked Edpuzzle, and you are right. There may be some uh, assignments that you have on Edpuzzle, but to get the actual assignments, you go to Google Classroom. So I love that you guys were thinking uh, outside of the box there, uh, but to get the actual assignments, you'll want to go to Google Classroom. All right, here are the platforms again. I know you guys are gonna be quick to the trigger this time, uh, but where do you watch videos? So where might you watch videos for your assignments? All right, that, is it, is it, per, help me out team, is that purple, that dark color, is it, is it gray? I'm colorblind. So whoever made that one uh, got it first. And I see in the chat, People are putting Edpuzzle, fantastic, great. All right, you guys are doing so great. So you are correct. So Edpuzzle is going to be where you are going to find all of your videos for classes. But again, those are going to be linked with your Google Classroom. So you don't necessarily have to go to Edpuzzle itself. You can go to Google Classroom. Okay. All right, so we're going to shift now 
um, into talking a little bit about email. So Ms. House mentioned this a second ago. Um, this is one of the most important things that you all need to remember about being able to access the um, platforms such as Edpuzzle and Google Classroom. You must log in using your Riverside email address. Your Riverside email address, as you see on the screen, is your first name dot last name at riversidehighschool.org. So if, for the example that we have here is a student whose email address is curtis.walker at riversidehighschool.org. Can you guys write in the chat for me what this student's first and last name is based on that email address? Yeah, good. So I don't know who the first person was, maybe Mr. Harper, you can see, but. Oh my goodness, it was, um... Phoenix again. Okay, Phoenix, you're on fire. Uh, but the student's name is Curtis Walker. Let's try this. Uh, you guys put your email addresses in the chat. Yeah. Good. Good. Uh, Lots of people. Tadriana, I want to uh, give you a special kudos because you did something that we didn't explicitly explain. Some of you may have apostrophes in your name, and as you're writing your, name, your email out, you can eliminate the apostrophes for the email. So she did that without even us needing to explain that. So uh, great job on doing that. Ms. Harper, can I ask to, if students have two last names, mm -hmm. which last, do you know which last name they're supposed to put? They can put both. Okay. And if you and if you put both and it doesn't work or it bounces back, uh, then just send us an email and we can help you out. Awesome. Uh, if you go ahead, Miss Bowen. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> we just want to say so much. I know. <laughs> um, but I was gonna I was gonna say that the the default password for your email address is one two three four, five, six, seven, eight, exclamation point. And remember, this is a Gmail-based email account. So if you go to gmail.com, log in with this email, the password that we just said, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, exclamation point, it will log you in, and then it'll ask you to reset your password. And I think it may be that or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, exclamation okay. point. It's, it's one of those two, Argonauts. When you reset your password, write it down and put it in the notes on your phone. So it's two different places. So that way you don't forget. All right. Yep. We're good to go then. Fantastic. So Argonauts, uh, you may be surprised to know that we have students from over 90 different middle schools here at Riverside High School and uh, a good chunk of different high schools uh, if they are transferring into Riverside from another high school. And the way we create such a diverse and cohesive environment where students love to be around each other and be around us and be around their teachers is we have a set of universal behavior policies. So these universal behavior policies are the foundation of who we are. They're policies and uh, guidelines that are in every single classroom at Riverside High School. So the only thing you need to do is to learn the content instead of trying to figure out which teachers allow what in which classrooms. And then teachers get to be able to just teach instead of trying to juggle expectations that different teachers have in different classrooms. Uh, However, like, go ahead. Go ahead. Nope, you go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Mr. David Johnson. Go ahead. Nope, finish. You do it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if I, if I, uh, nope, you're good. Uh, but it, we, we're living in a virtual environment now, Argonauts, obviously. And so um, we, all of, we can't implement all of these universal behavior policies because some of them just don't make sense in a virtual world. So what I would like for you to do is with the annotation tool, Argonauts, which universal behavior policies make the most sense to bring into a virtual world? What I'd like for you to do is to um, uh, Actually, instead of annotating, let me disable the annotation feature because it can get a little crowded. What I'd like for you to do in the chat is type the number of the universal behavior policies that make the most sense. 
to have in a virtual world. So take about, let's take 10 seconds to do that. Type the number or numbers of the universal behavior policies that make the most sense in a virtual world. There can be more than one Argonaut. All right, I'm seeing some one, three, four, fives, one, three, four, fives, one, three, four, fives, one, three, four, five, six. All but two, one, three, four, five. Okay, um, let's, uh, Argonauts, take a moment to see what your uh, friends have uh, typed in the chat, because I'm going to reveal them in just a moment in three, two, one, boom. All right, one, three, four, and five. So these are the ones that we are going to focus on in a virtual environment. Um, showing respect for people's property and the learning process, use school appropriate language, remaining awake, alert, and engaged in class, and coming to class on time, prepared to learn. Those are the four core universal behavior policies that are gonna be the most important as you begin your successful journey uh, at Riverside High School on Monday. Once we come back uh, to the building in either a hybrid mod not model or uh, hopefully we have a vaccine for COVID and we can all just be back together, we'll have another orientation about what the two, six, and seven mean uh, for being successful at Riverside High School. But we're actually gonna dive in to a few universal behavior policies to set you up for success. Take it away, Mr. Davis Johnson. All right, I didn't want to. I didn't want to talk over you again. I know. I was just. I was on a roll. No, you're. You're good. You're good. So uh, they already gave you um, tips and strategies of how to be successful, how you should wake up, uh, go about your day, get prepared for the school day. Uh, but a couple of things that we want to talk to talk about is make sure you're clicking the Zoom link on time. Okay, um, you're considered tardy. If you do not uh, arrive to class on time, uh, the teachers, not, not only do they have to teach you, right, but they have to monitor attendance as well virtually. So if you're not there, uh, not only are you missing that, that morning instruction or that instruction right away as soon as class starts, but you might be marked tardy. Uh, then that creates more work for the assistant heads of school because then we got to track you down. Um, seminar and Wednesdays. Uh, seminar is a, a study period, right? Like we said, you don't have to uh, be there for seminar, uh, but it is a time that you need to utilize on top of those office hours to stay on top of your work. Uh, it's not a time to kind of kick your feet up and, and play video games and do other things. We want you to be proactive, right? You're in, you're in high school now. Uh, you have to have some level of accountability uh, towards your work. Uh, and then, like it says right here on the page, get caught up or get ahead, right? Virtual learning uh, is fast paced. It's a little bit harder, but the way that we set things up with the Zoom and the Google Classroom, we are simulating a traditional classroom as much as possible. And I think we're doing that a lot better than a lot of other schools. Uh, <laughs> Remain awake, alert, and engaged in class. So make sure you're getting enough sleep. Don't stay up all night and expect to be awake, alert, and engaged in class. Uh, get that eight hours of sleep. Make sure you're hydrating. Make sure you have snacks. Uh, we want to see you. Like I said, uh, the Zoom is set up so that we can have a classroom uh, without essentially having a classroom. So uh, the teachers want to see your face. They want to be able to put names to faces. And they want to be able to build those, those meaningful relationships with you. And they can't do that if your camera is not on. Um, and then the chat feature is huge. Uh, you can privately message your, uh, your teacher if you have a question about an assignment or anything that they're teaching. Uh, and to build on top of that, if you have any other questions outside of that, you can always email your teacher. You can always email one of us. Uh, assistant heads of school, counselors, and we will be able to assist you. Uh, so do never feel like you are in this alone. Yep. And I will add to that, Mr. Davis Johnson, some of us, uh, actually, let me, let me do an example right now. 
So hopefully as I'm speaking, you can see my screen. And who wants to like see a disembodied voice or hear a disembodied voice, right? Uh, you wouldn't be able to see me. And so uh, that's why we always want to have the video on so that we can see you. That's part one. Part two is, listen, I'm at Riverside High School right now because my house is like, I have dishes all over the kitchen and like, I don't want you guys to see my dirty house. Uh, so I get it that sometimes like you got to find a small corner to, uh, to have your video on or uh, there are things that are going to be going on in your house where you're going to need to pause your video for a moment. So we completely get it um, and understand if you need to step away for a moment. Uh, but because we are so relational at Riverside High School, we would like for you to have your cameras on. All right, hopefully you guys were able to see the culture video Ed Puzzle that we created for you because uh, we think it is really the best representation of who we are because we want you to be engaged, uh, not simply in academics, but in clubs and extracurriculars as well. This is just a small sampling of the types of clubs and activities we offer at Riverside High School. And as the year begins, we will have more information for you about how to do these clubs virtually. Um, so just because we're not in the building doesn't mean we are not going to offer a wide variety of clubs and sports for you to engage in because we know that that's the lifeblood of how to remain active and successful at Riverside High School. Uh, Mr. Hughes, would you mind uh, jumping in and talking about what sports are, uh, are available now and the ones that are coming down the pike? Okay. So... Here at Riverside, we, we divide our seasons up into three different seasons. The one that's going on right now is called the fall season, even though it is summer, right? And so we have three sports going on right now, cross country, girls volleyball, and then soccer. Uh, so if you want to be involved in one of those teams, you need to get in touch with me and I can get you in touch with the coach. Uh, cross Country is practicing right now. They have a meet coming up. I think August 22nd is their first one. Uh, and then we have uh, volleyball. Right around that same time will be the first volleyball match. So uh, if you want to get involved, let me know. Uh, soccer is a little bit different this year. Uh, we're struggling and trying to find a coach. Uh, we are looking uh, uh, in all different areas, and we're interviewing people and trying to find the right fit for us. So as soon as we come up with a soccer coach, uh, we'll be sending out information um, to uh, whatever power school, whatever email address is on power school. We'll send that information out and let everybody know when their, uh, when practices start for soccer. Uh, last year, we didn't have enough players to do separate girls and boys soccer teams, so we combined them into one. We called it a co-ed soccer team. Uh, this year, it looks like the girls will have enough uh, to have their own. Um, and uh, so, um, but we'll see about the boys soccer as, as we come along. Now, in the wintertime, we will have basketball teams, both boys and girls basketball teams. Um, for girls, we had a JV and a varsity, and then for boys, we had a varsity, but we hope to start the JV team. Uh, one thing that I did not include on here, and I forgot, was uh, cheerleading. We also have cheerleading. Uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, be, be paying attention to the school announcements uh, for winter. Uh, there are no workouts yet scheduled for basketball uh, in the winter until probably later in September. So somewhere around, around, somewhere around that first week in September, look for announcements as to when basketball will start their workouts. And then in the spring, we have softball for girls, we have track, and we have boys volleyball. Uh, so that, those won't start up till mm, probably after spring break. So pay attention to the school announcements. We'll put all that information in when the team has a call out so you can get involved. Okay. Um, Football. We do not have a football team here at Riverside. Uh, it's very, very expensive to start a football team. And for small schools like us, it's very hard to maintain that. You need a lot of guys and you need a lot of money. And so we're going to push that off down the road uh, in, uh, until we are ready to handle that type of uh, responsibility. Mr. Hughes? And also, go ahead, Cliff. Mr. Koshin. What if I've never played a sport before? Okay, if you've never played a sport before, come talk to me. We will get you involved, okay, in one way or another. Right now, probably the easiest sport to get involved with is cross country. If you want to make yourself a better student, especially in this virtual world, stamina is 
the most important thing. You've got to be able to go for a long time. And cross country is that. If you don't know what cross country is, cross country is running long distances in a park, in, in a grass field. Uh, and so uh, uh, that would be the easiest one for you to get involved with. Uh, but even if you haven't, if you don't like long distance running, if you think you like soccer, well, that's also long distance running, but with a ball, right? Lots of running in soccer. And, and, um, and so uh, we will, uh, we'll take anybody on any team. Uh, we just need you to be willing to, uh, uh, to participate. Also for winter and spring, okay? This doesn't uh, account for fall yet because you guys are freshmen coming in. But for winter and spring, you have to make grades. Uh, we do have grade requirements for you to participate. So uh, if basketball is your thing, well, then this fall semester is very important. You've got to hit the grades and you've got to hit them hard to be eligible. Uh, Liliana, no, it is not required to do a sport, but we would love and super encourage you to just participate in any of our clubs or sports or activities or extracurriculars. Um, that's going to help to make you an even more well-rounded person. Cheer, cheer will start probably in September as well to get ready for the basketball season. So we have, uh, we've moved into uh, some question time, which is great. You Argonauts are already ahead of the curve. Uh, but we first just wanted to say thank you, thank you so much, Argonauts, uh, for joining us today on your orientation call. We desperately want to be in the building and to be with you guys. And because we can't, we are going to make your uh, high school experience as fun and as interactive as we can in this virtual world. And we'll have lots of celebrations when we eventually are able to get back into the building. Um, so we're so excited about that. And this is your team. Um, if you need to speak to anyone, the people who are on this call are the people who you want to reach out to for any type of question. And if you have questions about enrollment, uh, you can also talk to Ms. Young and email enrollment at riversidehighschool.org. So what I'd like to do is to take um, the next 10 minutes or so uh, to answer any questions that you Argonauts may have for us and go ahead and put them in the chat and we will address them uh, as uh, quickly as we can. Mr. Harper, um, I do have a, we were getting some information or feedback about the password not working. It mm -hmm. is actually for your emails. It's ICS 2020 exclamation point, unless maybe you've done Summer Academy, in which case then it might be that one, two, three, four, whatever you guys said that was. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And if that's not working, if those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine exclamation point, if that doesn't work, it is ICS for Indianapolis Classical Schools, all in caps, 2020 exclamation point. And that should help you access. And then in the chat earlier, I put a, and I'll try to do it here again, this YouTube. Uh, if you guys watch that, I think it says stuff about Heron, but it's for both schools. So that should help you learn how to sign into your email as well. Is our seven classes, right? You got seven classes that you're taking. Uh, you can only have an NG in two of them. So it's got to be two or less, and then you'll be able to participate in our sports. What is an NG, Mr. Hughes? Oh, an NG. That is a failing grade. Sorry. I thought that was covered earlier. Just as a, a reference, they might have forgot. Okay. And uh, so softball will be in the spring. So look for softball to start in April. Tadriana, you asked, how do you get into a club? We are going to share more information with you in the coming weeks about how to get involved in a club. Um, how do you sign up for a photography club? Again, I'll, we'll, we'll share that information with you. D&D &D club. Uh, I was not a part of D&D &D club, but wish I was. Um, but yep, you'll get more information about that. Um, is Black Excellence a safe space for Black students or open to all students? Uh, it is open to all students. Um, any student who wants to be a part of that space certainly can. Um, it's a part of our uh, diverse network of opportunities for students. So anyone is uh, 
able to be a part of that club. Um, if I don't want to do a sport this year, can I still do one next year? You certainly can, Kendall, and anyone who wants to. Um, they're not required, but I'd certainly encourage you to do one, even if you don't want to do one this year. Um, so you have cool, photography there class, there's an actual class missing? you can take, it's a full year long, you can earn a credit for it, two credits actually. Um, you just need to do 2D and 3D art first, right? So take 2D and 3D art this year, um, and then you can take photography after that. Miss Young, uh, there's a student who asked, do I still have time to take my placement test? Absolutely. Um, which I would, which student was it? Uh, they're on their iPhone. So Argonaut, uh, who, if you have that, whoever typed that question, go ahead and email Miss Young. You can email her at enrollment at riversidehighschool.org and she can coordinate with you. Yep. And we need to get these done as soon as possible so that we can get you your schedule. And she said her name is Bernice. Oh, Brantley. Yes, I gotcha. Uh, some questions about music. So we do have orchestra and jazz. Um, we, at this point, still have a couple of classes that uh, take place at Heron High School. They're joint Heron Riverside classes, um, and orchestra is one of them, uh, just because um, of logistics and the way things work. So if you want to do orchestra or band, you are still more than welcome to. Just know that that class um, is likely to be over at Heron. Kendall asks if we can, if you all can switch classes after schedules have gone out. Yeah, so remember you have to take those five core classes, right? Um, but you can certainly uh, add or drop your electives. Um, we, you will find out in advisory next week how to do that. There's an add drop form um, and you can add drop any of your classes that first week of school. Just know that because of the way the master schedule is built out, if you wanna change one of your classes, that might change your entire schedule. Right? And like, that's it. So just know that going into it. These are great questions. Okay. Uh, do we have a basketball team this year, Mr. Hughes? Uh, yes, we will have basketball this year as long as the Marion County Health Department allows us to play we will play. Someone also asked about baseball. Baseball team that is on schedule we are slated to start our very first baseball team this year so we're hoping for that. Kalia uh, yeah. asked about power school you when you get your schedule you'll also get your power school login information so it'll be at the bottom of your schedule, your PowerSchool login and password to access that. And just like your email, you'll want to go in and change your password so it's unique to you. And Ariana, there are all from freshmen to seniors that are new students. So if you are an upperclassman, don't feel like you're alone. You have lots of friends. Uh, yeah, club sign up is going to happen after school starts, so information will go out about that um, shortly. And uh, just know also that you can join clubs later in the school year too, right? So um, as you get more comfortable and settle in. Mr. Koshin, Charlotte asked about trying for an honors diploma, but um, can you help let them know that the way that we structure our schedule or our classes automatically kind of puts them? Yeah, so essentially Charlotte, if so long as you pass your classes, the way that we build our schedules over the four years here at Riverside High School will put you automatically on track for an honors diploma, right? The only thing that you just need to make sure to do is to continue to get that 70% or above in all your classes, right? And like, if you just do the things and follow the, the schedule, um, then you should be on track for that. We would love to talk with you more about like what that actually looks like for you specifically. Um, so just reach out to me or Ms. Butler and we can walk you through that. Okay, I have one last, last request. 
um, for my Argonauts before we go. Um, I'm giving extra credit to Olivia, Gerald, Ben, Evan, Amaya, Charlotte, uh, because they have their screens on, so I, we can see their lovely faces. Uh, I would love for everyone to just, you don't have, since we're at the end, just to have your screens on for a moment, since that's gonna be the norm, so that we can see your faces and just see who you are, and you guys can see each other, your bright, shining faces. Oh my goodness, so many Argonauts. I am so excited. Everyone's getting, everyone who's turning on their screens is getting extra credit. Oh man, look at this. It's so great. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. Hi. Hello, Argonauts. Hello, hello. Hi. So good to see so many of you. Uh, so you guys can um, scroll through your screens. I know some of you guys are like trying to look cute right now and like do your hair <laughs> real quick. It's okay. Just like, listen. I mean, it must be tough for you to not always look cute like us. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the middle of a pandemic argonaut so it, it is what it is okay uh so uh thank you guys so so much um we as the admin team are going to stay on the line um for just uh a few more minutes if you have additional questions but I otherwise have one, mr Harper, yeah, sorry. yeah go ahead mr Koshen. only because several people asked about it so world sure. languages mm -hmm. um yes you can most certainly take more than one world language at the same time if you so choose Freshmen and sophomores must take Latin. Once you become a junior, you can choose to take then either Spanish or French. Um, but of course, you can always double up if you want to do more than just the one. Yep. Thank you so much, Argonauts. Look forward to seeing you virtually and hopefully inside the building. Uh, but thank you so much and have a good evening.